Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonnet Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday. On a Friday we get together and we have a look at the Top 5 something normally to do with Blood Bowl. Now this one has been kicking around for a good few weeks now. With good reason, it is probably one of the most divisive and argument bringing topics that we cover on the podcast, except for maybe stalling. Um, and this is going to be the Top 5 Star Player May 2022 update now we've given you guys a ton of um, opportunities to talk us through what you think your top five is who you think is great who you think is not great um and we covered this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago as well but i thought i'd bring it together at last and kind of talk through the combined top five star players in blood bowl right now number five for me and you know okay let's try again Number five is Fungus the Loon. Now, Fungus fills a pretty great niche that has been missing. So he comes in and plays for uh, Underworld Challenge and Badlands Brawl. So there are a ton of great teams that can take this star player. But ultimately, the reason this star player is in the top five is return on investment. Some star players are prohibitively expensive, and therefore you don't get a chance to run them very much. Someone like Fungus, who comes in at 80,000 can be taken by a lot of league teams in a lot of games and can also be easily snuck in to a tournament roster. So Fungus the Loon is a movement for ball and chain with Mighty Blow. So 80k, yes he's a secret weapon so you're only going to get one uh, attempt in theory. Four moves, strength seven and when you knock a guy down you're going to get that plus one Mighty Blow. Now yeah, all right. Downside to this player, you get one drive without being able to invest in uh, bribes. Actually, a lot of the teams that are likely to take him, and I'm thinking about Goblins and Black Orcs and Snotlings, those teams that have that uh, bribery and corruption special rule, they're going to get half price bribes as well. So for 80k, you get one shot with a movement for Mighty Blow, Ball and Chain. 130k, you get him back at the next drive. Now, Ball and Chains are intrinsically risky, and the top five spot creek rust gouger is right there as well because there there is a comparison but 80k versus 170k is just absolutely monstrous you can fit fungus the loon into all of these rosters okay now the really really important thing about fungus the loon is that ball and chains will warp the game if you are playing if you are running a team with fungus the loon wherever you put him on whatever drive you deploy him he will and I, uh, warp the game. And what I mean by warp the game is your opponent is going to have to play into the fact and play up to the fact that you've got a Fnatic. Now, that can be good and that could be bad. So there are some bad matchups for Fungus the Loon. I'm thinking about stuff where your opponent's got strength five or six pieces that can very merrily just knock this guy down. If a ball and chain gets knocked down, it's going to be at least a KO. So watch out for that. But the point is that it will warp that game. So against a normal looking team that doesn't have a... a a minotaur or a, even a tree man that doesn't really matter um they're going to have to play their entire turn around taking out fungus the loon or they're just going to give you a ton of free blocks with this dude and for 80k it is <laughs> and that's the thing it's 80k which is a really small amount when it comes to inducements a wizard is 150k and you get one crack the entire game this guy's going to be on the pitch for three four five six turns which is a quarter of the game it's going to be free attacks it's not always going to work and it is a star player but the bargain price here at 80k just means that fungus the loon is going to make a massive difference in the game for basically a little bit more than a keg and if you've been playing blood bowl for a while you'll know that uh, i'll just take a keg is kind of the threshold of i've got inducements but they're not really going to help Eighty thousand. Fungus the Loon is going to help. Number four is Bomber Dribble Snot. Now, everything we've just said about Fungus the Loon is basically attributable here to Bomber Dribble Snot, except that he's cheaper at 50k. You can take a keg or you can take Bomber Dribble Snot. Now, Bomber can be taken by Badlands and Underworld, so there's a massive variety of teams. Goblins, Orcs, Underworld, Skaven, there's a bunch of great teams that can take this guy. Ogres as well. Right, and 50k, 
it's unfathomably cheap. We've got the FAQ coming up soon. I would, well, I don't think they're going to change it, but I wouldn't be opposed to him being increased in price. But for now, that 50k gives you just an unbelievably accurate bomber that once per game can just turn off your opponent's ability to catch the ball. Basically, he's accurate and he's passing 3+, plus, which means when you're within three squares of Bommel Dribble Snot, on a 2+, plus, you're going to die. You're going to get knocked to the ground. If you've got the ball, doesn't matter. If you're edge 2+, plus with catch, it doesn't matter because he can just rig the bomb, chuck it at you. You don't get a chance to catch. The only thing you can do is hope that someone in the way deflects it, which means it's a 3+, plus chuck for six squares, which is absolutely massive. This guy at 50k is also going to be allow, able to allow those teams with cheap bribes, goblins looking at you here, to take an extra bribe. So he's actually 100k for two drives with what has to be the best artillery in this game. For 150k, he and two bribes is much better than a wizard significantly better than a wizard because every single turn this guy is two plus three squares three plus six squares four plus up to nine squares and five plus up to 13 squares four plus okay he's throwing a long throw with a bomb and if it misses it doesn't matter because it's scattering and it's got an area of effect absolutely monstrous now the reason he's so high up on the rank ow that hurt um is because he just warps the game as well. He's just going to give you this repeated ability to balance out the odds. Even if he's only chucking the bomb at just a random lineman. Actually, that's one more opportunity to just make a hole. To be able to charge the cage. But really, what he does is he gives you that incredible ability to just take out really high-powered players. Because a 4-plus bomb drop is amazing. You throw this at a giant. You throw this at Morgue. You throw this at a War Dancer. 4-plus, that dude's going down. Now, if you throw at those players and they aren't able to catch it, they're going down. So it's absolutely phenomenal. Bomber is the goblin that we needed. Now, he doesn't help you win the game. He just basically helps you from losing it because he will. He's, he plays pretty great on defense. Now, offense, to be fair, he's got hands. He's got accurate. He actually gives you a 50k player that has got a 2 plus quick pass. I'd rather be throwing bombs with this guy. But all the teams that can take him, they do have edge 3 plus. So they've got edge 3 plus. They've got a reasonable amount of stuff. What he doesn't do is fill that gap of agility. But for 50k, this guy is going to change the game. He's going to give you an opportunity. And you're going to see him all the time in league if your opponent knows what they're doing. Number three. And we're really down to the big three here, aren't we? You know what's coming. It is Morgan Thorg at number three. Morg is a monster. In the old edition, you looked at him, you looked at his price tag, which I think was 430,000, and you never played him. You never played against him. It, he very rarely came up unless you were having like a theme party, okay? Then they dropped his price to 340. And we saw Morg all of the time. He has been FAQ'd up to 380. Now we're in May. There is another FAQ coming. I don't know if we're going to see any more changes. I doubt it because I think 380 is probably about fair for Morg. But you get that money back. This guy is strength 6, edge 3+, plus, mighty blow plus 2 is great at throwing people. And he's got no nega traits. My, my old mighty blow Morgan Thorg here is an absolute monster. It's a massive investment, but to not have him in the top five would have been incredibly wrong. Because if you are at a tournament or if you are playing in a league game where you can induce Morg or you're playing against an opponent who is inducing Morg, he is a he is a brilliant equaliser. Now, Bomber, Fungus, we've already talked about, they are super cheap and they're going to have a bit of an impact in the game. But they're secret weapons, they are incredibly fragile and they can be incredibly gone very quickly. This guy is the gone maker, right? He's got that huge amount of strength. He's got that mighty blow plus two. He is just an absolute beast on the pitch. There are very few circumstances that someone can one-on-one -on -one Morg. And if you've got Morg against you, the best thing you can do is feed him linemen. But because he's got that mighty blow plus two, and because, quite frankly, Ange 3 plus is reasonable if you need to get him out there, that's not going to hold him. You will need to sacrifice a couple of players to keep him in place. Now, hard... <laughs> 
the kind of hard counter here is a couple of snotlings uh, and more is kept away because you've got 380k versus 30k of snotlings but you're losing activations and Morg is going to warp the pitch massively every single turn but he's got the range and he's got the skill and he's got the power to get out of that to change that warp to bring it where it needs to be if he's got the ball you're in trouble if he's near the ball you're in trouble if he's the other side of the pitch from the ball you're probably still in trouble Morgan Thorg is an absolute powerhouse in Blood Bowl and with the exception of the next two star players if you can take him it's a really tough balance to not want to take Morg. Number two is Hackblem, and this is where I think the comments are going to start to fly. So, you knew Hackblem was going to be on this list because Fungus, Bomber, Morg, they warped the game, right? This boy here warped the meta. So, he was coming in at, what, 180k? He's been boosted up to 210k, which I still think is underpriced for what you get. Now, I run Hackblem a lot. You've seen it on the channel with a bunch of different teams i've taken him to tournaments i've used him in league hack Flem is the ultimate equalizer essentially when it comes to all of the teams that can take him all the flipping chaos teams chaos dwarves can take him right snotlings use him and he kind of fits in really nicely as a bit of a positional but he is just automatic this guy is automatic if he starts the turn somewhere and you want him to finish the turn 11 squares away it's not going to not happen, right? And 11 squares is a massive amount of space on the Blood Bowl pitch. Movement 9, Adj, 1 plus basically all of the time because he's got two heads, he's got extra arms, he's just got extra everything, and this guy is just dripping in awesome. He is overpowered. The price increase helped. He needs to be 250, 240, 250, I think, to kind of balance it out we have seen a bit of a decline in his effectiveness because of that price increase and it's caused that meta to change there is just such a uh, hack phlegm thing it's led to so many tournaments go we don't want star players it's led to so many tournaments going let's have some extra tackle let's do some extra stuff run below sheepskin is the best thing you can induce against this guy okay just he's got uh, is that right Actually, I think Will M. Cheney is probably better, but he's more expensive. Run below, 170k. Tackle, horns, right? Does a great job of going over here and pounding this dude into the dirt. Hack Flem deserves a fantastic kicking every time you play against him. If your opponent is bringing Hack Flem, you need to end Hack Flem. But that also plays into so many of these team strengths. If a Chaos team or a Chaos Dwarf team is running a team with Hackflem and you take out Hackflem, you've still got a Chaos Dwarf team and you just spent three or four turns focusing on this guy and not the rest of their team, the rest of their team is going to have spent those four turns focusing on your team and that is a battle most teams are going to lose. And then you've got something like Underworld or Skaven or Snotlings who quite frankly have got plenty of cheeky opportunities to score anyway. Underworld with Hackflem has been top tier it's dropping slightly okay which is great to see but it's because they've got hack phlegm and then if you take out hack phlegm they've still got a gutter runner and some mutations and a rat ogre so hack phlegm is basically the definition of win more he's in there to add an element to these teams that they don't already have and that might actually be too much and that is why hack phlegm is the number two top five star player Which makes the number one Griff Overworld. Now, this is the bit that gets really, really controversial because I imagine everyone's going to be like, look, Hack Flem is worse than Griff. Let's break this down. Griff is more expensive than Hack Flem. Griff is technically slower than Hack Flem. Being movement 7, sprint, sure feet basically makes him movement 10 and Hack Flem is basically movement 9 to 11. So comparable speed wise. Agility wise, this guy's 2 plus edge and Hack Flem is 1 plus edge. They've both got dodge. They can both do absolutely filthy things. But what you get with Hack Flem is a runner, is a catcher, is a scorer. And if you're playing him on a Snotling team, he becomes your primary blitzer. But the dude has no combat skills and he is incredibly fragile. And I ended up using him as my blitzer when I run him with Snotlings because actually he's the strongest player on my team that isn't a troll. Okay, let's talk about Griff. 
Griff is a movement 10 edge 2 plus dodge piece. That is awesome. And he's also strength 4 block. He's got some other skills that no one cares about. Fend? It's going to come in handy every now and again. And he's got a special power that is basically one auto reroll a game for just Griff. But the dude has got everything. Block, dodge, strength 4. Strength 4 block. You get a Blitzer star player with the speed and agility of a running catching star player. The guy is an absolute monster. You put Griff on the pitch, it doesn't matter what the rest of the team is. You are playing against Griff. You're playing against Hack Flem team, you're playing against a team with Hack Flem, and it's kind of like two, two elements, okay? Griff is the closest thing to a one-man band you get. This guy is just... A force. You're playing against Griff. Griff alone can win this game in a way that no other star player in this entire game can do it. This guy can run in and can take a risky dodge and can pound the ball carrier out and has got the agility to be able to grab that ball and the speed to be able to score. This guy is just one man banding and one man winning. And it's awesome. He's priced at 280, which is incredibly expensive, but actually incredibly affordable. And there are some teams out there like the um, <laughs> the Griff Ogrewald build. Absolutely love it. You can run it in league. You can run it in tournament. I love ogres, and I love this, and it's a great way to get Griff to the pitch. And the griff Carla halfling combo is also pretty amazing. And in both of those teams, you are playing Griff with a couple of backup players, okay? This guy's like the A-team, but he's just one dude, and it's just phenomenal. I'm not going to gush too much more. I think he's priced right. You can beat him. You can beat Hackflem. Hackflem tends to beat himself sometimes by taking and trying on too much and just catching fire. But if you're playing against Griff, there's that th you've got no angle. He's got good armor. He's got combat. He's got strength. He's got edge. He's got dodge. He's got speed. This dude has absolutely everything. And the biggest moment of realization for how good is Griff was when I was playing a Norse test game when the Norse rules got spoiled and the Norse star rules got spoiled and uh, Trips was running Ivar. But he was using a Griff model. And I cannot tell you the fear element of me looking at the pitch and being like, oh, Griff's going to run out there and block that dude and dodge there. And then I was like, oh, it's Ivar. Griff uh, is just in another league. And I know that it's tight at the top and the top three can be interchanged, whatever. But for me, Griff, despite the fact he has a stupid bird, is the number one star player in Blood Bowl. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up. Let the comments begin. I want to know who you think I'm overrating, who you think I'm underrating. And the great thing is we're going to get more star players. But these top three, they've corrected the price for two of them. I don't think we need to see Griff's price go up. Maybe we need to see Hackflem's price go up a bit more. We're getting to the point where it's kind of plateauing a bit. But each of these star players in the top five add a huge element to the teams that can take them. They're so impactful. But Griff, it doesn't even matter what team you take him with. Griff is going to do it. And I love it. It's really good fun. Anyway, guys, I am going to wrap up. Thank you ever so much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.